Good day and welcome back to our part three of our NM31, the mathematics of the first term of the third year and this presentation will show you more about the algebra and the graphs. One of the topics that a lot of you struggle with, but let's take it and let's go for it. Um, remember my telephone number and my email. You're welcome to contact me, ask me questions, and um, just remember, adhere to the times, that uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, please give me off then. <laughs> Thank you. The study unit five, which covers the algebra. Now, as you see, 25 marks goes to study unit five and six, which is the algebra and the graph. Um, graph. So that's really a lot of marks. So see that you can do them. There will be exactly uh, questions from all the different kinds. There will be questions on factorizing, on multiplying out the brackets, on uh, f fractions, because that's the main topic in your, uh, uh, in your unit here, is the fractions, algebra fractions. So face it, take it, go for it, and make sure that you know the, the few simple rules that you can do factors, fractions, factorizing. There's lots and lots of information and lots and lots of, of uh, examples and worksheets on the, on the internet on all the different sites with answers, even videos, videos that you can uh, watch doing algebra fractions. If you just key in algebra fractions, then you will get all the different kinds of videos that will explain it to you also. So let's start with what do you need to know? And that is one of the biggest things. Uh, you can't just do what is in the study guide because that's algebra fractions, which it's kind of really advanced. You need to know the basic principles of algebra. Otherwise, you can't do the advanced fractions. So there's five things that I've pointed out that you need to know, this is your background knowledge. You need to be able to collect like terms in algebra. You need to know that I can only add x to x's and y's to y's. 3x plus 2y plus 5z can't be added. They are unlike terms. And you need to be able to identify a constant. What is a constant? That is a term without a variable. So you need to know what variables are, what constants are, what like terms are, what unlike terms are. When can I add and subtract? You need to be able to add integers. Add integers and subtract integers. What is 5 minus 7? It's minus 2. What is 20 minus 25? It's minus 5. What is minus 5 minus 12? It's minus 17. You need to be able to add and subtract integers as well as multiply and divide them. So a positive divide by a positive and a positive multiplied positive stays a positive. But a negative divide by a negative gives you a positive. And a negative divide by a positive gives you a negative. Um, you need to know all these things. And also, remember, it applies to all algebra, to fractions, to, uh, uh, to all the different kinds of algebra topics. These things apply, and you need to know. This is the background. So uh, get some worksheets on that and see that you are well aware of adding integers. If you put add integers or multiply integers, uh, if you enter that on a, on a search, you will get definitely enough videos and worksheets to work out to see how to handle the positives and the negatives. When do I add? When do I subtract? Etc. And never say a negative and a negative is a positive because that's where you confuse yourself. It's a negative multiply a negative. 
gives you a positive. If I say negative 5, negative 7, that's negative 12. So don't confuse that and, and, and say some things that confuse yourself. It's when you multiply a negative and a positive that it gives you a negative, etc. You need to be able to remove brackets and then add like terms. You need to be able to solve equations, meaning you have a left side and a right side. What I do to the left side, I do to the right side. If I add, I subtract. If, uh, if I add uh, uh, a number, I add both sides. Or if I want to get rid of addition, I subtract it both sides. If I want to get rid of multiplication, I divide it away, etc. You need to be able to uh, manipulate fractions. You need to be able to do normal uh, fractions, a third plus a half, to get the lowest common multiple of the three and the two. A third and a half, a third times a half, a third divide by a half. You need to know that division change to multiplication and the number invert. These are all the different, uh, knowledge, uh, different topics that you need to know for background. Factorizing, very important because you use that in algebra fractions. Common factor, take out a common factor. Grouping, the difference between two squares and trinomials. These are the different types of factorizing you need to be really uh, well acquainted with to be able to do algebra fractions because algebra fractions that's your topic for this uh, study unit. So let's just quickly look at some of the background to collect like terms. Here we have A's and B's and I, there's no constant but if there were constants the constants you add separately. A A's and A's go together. I can add 2A minus 7A gives you minus 5A. Minus 5B plus 2B gives you minus 3B. And these ones, a lot of mistakes are made when you add like terms. Make sure you have the correct sign. Remove brackets. It means multiply the brackets in. 3 times M is 3M. 3 times 3 is 9. Then I'm done with the first bracket. Then minus 2 times 3m gives you negative 6m. And minus 2 times the minus 1 gives you the positive 2. And that's where most of you make mistakes with that last multiplication. A negative times the negative gives a positive. 2 times 1 is 2. Now there we have constants. And we have the 3m plus minus the 6m. There we add them. Add them. 3 minus 6 is minus 3. Add the constants. 9 plus 2 is 11. Now when you have equations to solve, look, the previous one, there were no equations. And that's also a common mistake many of you make. You... Um, you, I give you an, uh, uh, I just give you an expression, and I say remove the brackets, and then all of a sudden appears an equal sign, and you uh, do some weird things. So please see if there's no equation to solve, you don't solve equation. There is nothing to solve. You just have to add the like terms given another expression, an al algebra expression. When you have to solve equations, you have to apply all the previous knowledge. You have to multiply in the brackets. So you multiply them in, get your answers. In the right, on the right-hand side as well as on the left-hand side. Then add the life terms on the left. 6a plus 4a is 10a. The minus 18 minus 28 is minus 46. Remember, if you want to add negatives, if you're dealing and adding, subtracting negatives and positives. I can give you a hint. See it as money. I always say, you won't cheat yourself if you work with money. If I've got money in my pocket, this is plus, positive. 
If I owe you, that's negative. So if I have $20 in my pocket and I owe you 10 I take the 10 and I give it to you, what do I have left? Do I have money in my pocket left or do I still owe you? No, I've got $10 money left in my pocket. So my answer is positive 10. If I've got $20 in my pocket and I owe you 25, I take the 20 and I pay you. But what's left? Do I still owe you or do I have money in my pocket left? No, I still owe you. So O is negative. So my answer will be negative 5. 20 minus 25 is negative 5. Always consider this as money. That's one of the ways how you can overcome this uh, uh, problem of getting the, 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 the terms, uh, the signs mixed up. See it as owing and money. Now, in this problem, we had the minus 18, negative 18, negative 28. So I owe you, I owe John and I owe Pete. Uh, Peter and I owe all together, I don't have any money, I, I owe all together $46. Can you see where this comes from? On the right hand side, I just have the 45 plus 1, which is 46. Now, I get the like terms on the same side. How do I get the 15A away on the right hand side? I subtract it. I subtract it the right and I subtracted the left, so minus 15a, then it's gone, then I minus 15a on the left. Never say, take it to the other side and change the sign. It's not what's happening. That's not mathematic thinking. Just think, you subtracted both sides. Then 10a, 10a minus 15a, again, I've got $10 in my pocket. I owe you 15. So I take the 10 and I pay you. Do I have money left or do I still owe? No, I still owe 5. And that's where the 5a comes from. So here we have minus 5a and the minus 46 on the left, I add it to get, get it away. So I add it both sides and you have your answer. Negative 5a is 92. Now, how do I get multiplication away? I divide. You divide by the negative 5. So, both sides, I divide by negative 5, and I got my final answer. Now, already remember, please give your answer in simplest form. Um, negative 92 on 5 will be also accepted, or if the question says, Give your answer as a mixed number. You have to give it as a mixed number, which means whole numbers and fractions. So minus 18 and 2 fifths. Uh, in many of these questions, uh, students l lost a lot of marks because of this. Give your answer in simplest form. Give your answer as a decimal. Give your answer as a mixed number. Give your answer as an improper fraction. Read what the question asks and then do it. Give it in that form. Otherwise, you lose unnecessary marks. Okay, now let's look at the basic knowledge that you have to know. We have not started uh, at the topic yet. This is all basic knowledge. This is your knowledge that you have to know to be able to solve algebra fractions. Uh, Multiply and dividing of fractions. If you have mixed numbers, you can't, you can't multiply and divide mixed numbers. You have to make it improper fractions. So this is where we start. Two and two thirds, we make it an improper fraction, eight on three. You say two times three is six plus the two. Two times three there's 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 2 on top gives you the 8 on 3. Divide by, now let's first make this an improper fraction. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus the 3 is the 24. Now, division. I can't work with division. Division is the same as multiply the inverse. So I have to swap the top and bottom around. 7 on the 24 on 7 becomes 7 on 24. 
Now I can multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms and simplify or I can say 8 goes in himself once and in 24 three times. 1 times 7 is 7 and 3 times 3 is 9. Whichever way you do it, please just write the steps. You need all these steps in your questions. Now here we also have plus. You have to adding and subtraction. 3 and 2 fifths plus 1 and a third. You can also make it improper fractions. Yes, 15 on 5 plus 4 on 3. Now, here comes the thing, because this is what you're going to apply in the algebra. You have to get a common denominator. What can go into 5 and into... What can 5 go into and 3 can go also into? That's a common multiple. What is my lowest common multiple, which is 15? So I make both of them 15. And I always say, what's missing at the bottom, you multiply on top. What's missing at the bottom, you multiply on top. So let's look at this now. There's 5. How do I get to 15? I times with 3. So the times 3 is missing at the bottom. So I multiply the top also with times 3. So bottom 3, there's a 3. I must get to 15. How do I get to 15? 3 times 5. So at the bottom I need a times 5. So at the top, on the uh, top I also times 5. Now I add the tops, get the final answer. And if it's asked, give it as a mixed number, you have to give it as a mixed number. So you say 4 and 11 fifteens. You can't, uh, then you'll lose a mark if you keep it as an improper fraction. So this is just uh, still basic knowledge, factorizing. You need to know these factorizing, otherwise you can't do any of the algebra fractions. So can you see, you can't just do uh, algebra fractions because it starts already way into algebra and all this you have to know and you have to get yourself up to date yourself. It's not in the study guide. You, you have to do this and go through all these things so that you can do it. Common factor, what goes into 6a squared as well as 8a? A 2 can go into 6, a 2 can go into 8, so I take out a 2. A, a can go into A squared, a, a can go into A. So we always say, take out a 2A. But what does it actually mean? It means divide by 2A. So it's as good as you say, 6A squared divide by 2A, and the answer is 3A, which you write inside the bracket. The negative... <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, it stays the negative. 6a squared divided by 2a is 3a minus, now 8a divided by 2a is 4. And there we have your final answer. We factorized. That's factors. What do we reach with factorizing? We get one term instead of two or three terms. With grouping, you have four terms. Four terms. And Look at the end. You have one term. So you group two, two together. And remember, one big rule. If you put, here's a negative. I want to put a bracket here. I want to group these two last ones together. If you put a bracket after a negative, the sign in the bracket must change. Now it's a minus 6BC. It becomes a plus 6BC. If you multiply out that bracket again, you will get the same answer as on top. Always check that. Minus 1, there's actually a 1. Minus 1 times 2b squared is minus 2b squared. Minus times a plus is a minus. Right. So now you take out. You do actually just singular. Uh, take out an a from the first bracket. Then I've got left a b plus 3c. Then take out a 2b, uh, and I'm left with a b plus 3c. Now let's look at this. There's a bracket, b plus 3c, and a whole bracket, b plus 3c. 
So I take out the whole bracket B plus 3C, and what's left in my next bracket? A minus 2B. That is grouping. Difference between two squares, you have a square, a square, 16 is a square, A squared is a square, and it must be difference, difference is minus. So 4B, 4 is a square, B to the 4 is a square, 9 is a square. So what do I do? I always have two brackets, the same first term and the same last term. One with a plus, one with a minus. There we have 4a is the square root. 16 square root is 4. a square square root is a. 4a, 4a. 4 square root is 2. b to the 4 square root is b squared. Square root of 9 is 3. So we've got 4a plus 2b squared on 3. And the next bracket, 4a minus 2b squared on 3. Same terms, but a plus and a minus. That's the difference between two squares. Trinomial, you have b squared plus 3b. You've got a square, a b squared, a single, and a constant. That's a trinomial. You have to factorize it into the two brackets. So you say... What times what is 12? The last sign tells you the signs are the same. The last sign tells you if it's a positive, the signs are the same. If the last sign is a negative, the signs are different. Now they are the same. What are they? They are both plus. So what times what is 12? If I add it, I get 7. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 plus 3 is 7. So those are your factors. When you have a number in front, a coefficient of the a square, you can't use the mental way. You have to write it this way. We've got the 2 times 3 and the 2 times minus 4. You can also follow the other method where you actually use uh, in the end the grouping. It doesn't matter which method you follow as long as you get to the correct answer. Here we say that the factors of 6 is 2 times 3. The factors of 8 is 2 times 4. And then you multiply. 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 2 is 6. No signs yet. Now you say, how can I get minus 2? By putting plus 6 minus 8. Then only you put the negative sign next to the 8 in the bracket there, and the positive sign next to it in the 2, and you put an A with the 2 and the A with the 3, then you've got 2A plus 2 and 3A minus 4. So factorizing trinomials is a big part of algebra, and you have to be able to do it very well. So now only we can get to fractions. Now only we reach our topic. So what do we do? We factorize first. Look at number one. Take out a common factor, we factorize it. The bottom is, the denominator is the difference between two squares. We factorize it. If there's now, now it's one term. As long as there's a plus or a minus, I can't simplify, I can't uh, cancel. Now I can cancel if there's things that are the same. So I can now cancel the two the x minus 2 with the x minus 2, and that's my whole answer left. Don't try and get uh, work further. This is, this is it. That's my answer. Look at the second one. Again, we have difference between square, two squares here at the bottom. So we first factorize that. Then we get the common denominator, the lowest common multiply, will, uh, multiple will be 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3. But what is missing? On the first term, there's nothing missing, so x plus x. But at the second term, there's a 2x plus 3 missing. So the 5, I must multiply with a 2x plus 3. And remember this minus stays there, which is going to be multiplied into the bracket to give that minus 15 there. Don't mess that up because that is very important. And now I add like terms. 
x minus 10x is minus 9x, and that's your final answer there, the last step. Nothing further. So you factorize, get one term, and that's, cancel if there's anything to cancel. Otherwise, you just leave it. That's your answer. So please follow the rule, follow the uh, activities, and also the examples. Work through them on your own. Then simplify uh, some fractions when we have to add. Same thing. Make, like we had in the example, make improper fractions. Get the common denominator. Here I can now multiply both sides with 15. Then I'm left with the tops. Get the x's on one side. Get the numbers on one side. And get your final answer. And if it asks, give your answer as a mixed number, you must say minus 6 and 6. So work through them. You need the practice. With word problems, carefully read. Three angles of a triangle. There's your three angles. What do you know? The three angles add up to 180. So you make an equation. Add the three carefully equals 180. Add the like terms, 3x, x plus x plus x. Subtract the 30, um, the 20 minus 50. Then I must add it to get it away on the left. Now it's there and I divide in the end by the 3. Step by step find your solution and write all the steps, do all the calculations. Now let's look at the graph. Why is mx plus c? You have to know. m is the gradient. c is the y-intercept. If you get a table, you have, to, um, you have to substitute in your formula. 3x minus 2. What is x in the first place? The minus 2. Just find the value of y and put it in there. 3x minus 2. You work with that and just do substitution of the 1. Do substitution of the 2. Do substitution of the 3 to get your values. And remember, this is the co these are the coordinates. Minus 2, minus 8. If you have to write a coordinate with brackets, remember, as I said earlier, without the brackets at the sides, it's no coordinate. Then you can draw the graph. You plot the points at the specific places and you draw the graph neatly with a straight line. Now, what now? If I give you a graph like that, I say that's the question, I give you nothing else. That's my question. You write in the first place, y is mx plus c. y equals mx plus c. What is c? The c is the Easiest way, easiest one to find. You look at the graph. Why does it, where does it cut the y-axis at minus 2? y equals mx minus 2. You have to see. What's the gradient? The gradient, you count blocks. Here's my blocks. 2 on, is it 2 on, no, that's not a full one. 1, 2, 3 on 1. So that's my full, full uh, count Three vertical, three down, one to the side, three on one is three. That's the gradient. Or you can pick any two nice points, find the gradient with y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. You need to know that m is the gradient, how to find it with counting blocks or with a formula, and the c, you just read off the y-intercept. So the straight line, you need to know when the gradient is given, the equation of a straight line can be written down directly. The gradient and the y-intercept. Because that's the m and the c, you have it. If it says there, the gradient of a straight line is 2 and the y-intercept is negative 3. Write down the equation. You just fill it in. y equals 2x, the gradient x, minus 3. You have to calculate or work out nothing. If the gradient is 1, the next question, and the y-intercept is 0, write down the equation. 
the gradient is 1. y equals mx plus c, y equals 1x plus c. c is 0, x is 1. And usually, we don't write the 1, and we don't write the plus 0. So what's my answer? y equals x. And that's it. So also practice. There's lots of, of information on the internet. Uh, straight lines, drawing straight lines, um, finding the gradient, finding the y-intercept, uh, reading off from graphs. Practice and make yourself acquainted with this work. Uh, you can't just look at it and say, oh yeah, I understand it. It's not the way it works. You have to practice and all of the best. So that takes care of part three. The last part will follow uh, part four, the last two chapters of your study guide. Thank you.